Over the years, I've often thought that a 3D printer would make a great addition to the craft room. And recently, we had the opportunity to try out both the Bamboo Lab A1 and the A1 Mini. Now bear in mind that we're both complete beginners, so we had zero knowledge about how 3D printers work. So this review will focus on our experience from that perspective, with an emphasis on the larger A1 printer. So let's start with the setup. Now I have to say that I had visions of it coming in pieces and having to spend a few hours putting it all together like some of our laser machines. So it was wonderful to see it come out of the box pretty much assembled. It took maybe a half an hour or so to put it together. We had to undo a few holding screws, install the build plate which was pretty simple. It's magnetised so we just had to align it at the top of the heat bed. And then we had to push the heat bed into the machine. And once that was done, it was just a matter of locking it all in place by removing the cover and installing a few screws, which are easily identified in green. And then we had to plug in all the necessary cables, and these are identified by colour as well. And that's what I like about these printers. It's like Bamboo Lab have anticipated everything that a newbie might experience. The colour coding makes everything super simple. And the final step was to attach the purge wiper to the side of the machine. So all in all, the whole setup process for the printer itself is really simple. The manual made everything easy and we had zero issues. Now the printer comes with a spool holder that you can attach to the top of the printer and it'll hold one spool of filament. But you can also purchase a combo version of this machine that includes an AMS light which allows you to print using multiple colours. This was super simple to set up. The colour coding came into play again here, making it really easy to see where the spool holders needed to be placed. Now this does take up space obviously, so keep that in mind if you're going to purchase the multiple spool holder. Although I did notice that there is an official bamboo file that you can print to mount the AMS light to the top of the A1 printer. Now this is something that we're going to be doing. We mostly use Bamboo Lab filament, but you aren't restricted to only using their filament. You can use other brands, which is good to see. The filament comes in all sorts of colours and types, but for starting out, it's recommended that you use PLA or PETG, which is what we went with. When you turn on the machine, you're taken through a setup process to connect the machine to your Wi-Fi, and then there's a calibration process. The on-screen display walks you through step by step, so you don't have to do anything other than press some buttons. Again, this was all really simple to do, and it works seamlessly for us. We didn't have any problems connecting. You can also download the Bamboo Lab app, which I highly recommend. Now this allows you to connect to the Maker World site, so that you send files directly to your machine. Plus you can keep an eye on your 3D print from anywhere in the house. It's a bit laggy, but it does the job. Now the A1 includes a number of built-in files that you can use, and this is probably the best place to start for a newbie. We selected the Benchy, and it was just a matter of selecting the file, choosing the filament colour, and clicking print. The machine does go through a bit of a setup period, where it warms the plate, loads the filament, cleans the nozzle, makes sure the bed is level, and so on. This can take around 5 minutes or so, which seems like forever, but I guess it is making sure that when you commit to a print, that everything is going to work out okay. If it's your first time watching a 3D printer in action, it's mesmerising to see these prints being created. For our first print on this machine, the Benchy turned out great. So once we had our test print out of the way, we headed over to the Maker World website where there are thousands of free 3D printer files that you can download. To use these files, you need to download the free Bamboo Studio software. Now I found the software to be pretty intuitive. I'm sure there's more we have to learn since there are a lot of options in here, but we were able to get our first print done without having to watch a tutorial. It was simply a matter of finding a file in Maker World that we liked and opening it up in the software. Then we just had to select the machine from the drop down and then select the filament that we wanted to use. And then on the preview tab, you get to see the details of how much filament will be used and an estimate of the cost of the completed print. And now we just click print plate and away it goes. Now we previously printed out one of these cheese holders on the A1 Mini, but thought we'd give it a go on the A1. It's great for holding those wrapped cheese slices in the fridge. 
Now I wanted a larger size to hold note paper, so we enlarged the design and this was so easy to do in the Bamboo Lab software. Now we can cut up scrap paper to fit and hey presto, a handy dandy note paper holder. The next thing I wanted to print was a mason jar lid holder. Now these were all in one file, but we printed them out separately. This is a much better way to store the lids than what I currently have, which is tossing them into a plastic bag. Now they're much neater and easier to find. Then we wanted to try a few laser related 3D files. Now we have a couple of laser machines that we don't use very often and they just take up space. So we downloaded a pattern for holders to screw on the garage wall so that we can hang them up. They are still handy for when we do want to use them and hanging them on the wall will keep them up out of the way when they're not required. Now our X-Tool F1 laser is our go-to laser machine. So we thought we'd take a look to see if there are any related 3D files and we weren't disappointed. I had some keychains that I wanted from Grave Farm for Christmas presents, so I was really happy to find this. We also have one of those wonderful X-Tool M1 lasers, but one of the frustrating things is lining up the triangle bed frame risers. They tend to slip around. It's not a big deal, but when I saw this pattern for a frame to hold the triangles in place, I thought, yep, that's exactly what I need. Now I do a bit of gardening and I sometimes use those jiffy seed pots to start seeds and I thought this was a great way of holding the pods in one place and allowing them to be watered all at once. They came out great, really nice file, so I intend to print a few more of these. I thought this was a neat idea and I really need something to tidy up those loose rolls of cling wrap and foil. It came out great but unfortunately I mostly have the really large rolls that you get from Costco so they don't fit. I'll probably give it away as a gift. I've also made a ton of stuff on the A1 Mini and if you're interested in seeing the smaller A1 Mini in action we have a separate review on our Orlando Craft channel and I'll include a link in the description field below. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of the Bamboo Lab A1. First of all, this 3D printer is super beginner friendly. We had no idea how to use one and we managed to have it up and running within an hour or so. Everything is made with the beginner in mind, like the helpful colour coding during setup, the easy to use touchscreen interface and the intuitive software that doesn't require a degree to figure it out. The machine has auto bed levelling, so you don't need to manually calibrate it. Since this was my first 3D printer, I just assumed they all work this way, but apparently not. So it's nice to see that I don't have to fuss around getting the bed level. The machine is pretty quiet. I could hear it from a second room, but it wasn't overly loud, so you could easily have this inside the home and not bug anyone. We did buy an air purifier, and that is actually louder than the printer. Sometimes, with even the best of intentions, something can go wrong, and in one project there was a problem with the filament. Well, not the filament per se, but it had come loose on the spool and wrapped itself around one of the arms on the AMS light. Now straight away the machine stopped printing and an error message appeared on the screen and on my iPad to say that there was a problem with the filament. On checking it out I found the problem and fixed it. The machine then restarted in the exact same spot it had stopped and finished the print. Now I think that's pretty awesome. Another great thing I found was the amount of spare part files available in Maker World for all sorts of things. For example, I recently had to replace my fridge after many years because the plastic connector on the door broke and I couldn't get a replacement. If I had had their 3D printer back then, I could have made one. I did find a pattern in Maker World that would have suited perfectly. And this also applies to sewing machine parts, machinery and tools. Now the printer doesn't take up a lot of room in my craft room, however if you decide to purchase the AMS light you are essentially doubling the amount of space so do keep that in mind. And one thing I really love is that I can leave the machine to do its thing and keep an eye on it via my tablet or phone as it has a built in camera. So let's talk about the cons. Well honestly I find it very hard to fault this machine. It was our first so maybe if we had something to compare it with we could come up with a list of things but for someone who was completely new to 3D printing I found it to be super easy to use and so much fun. If I did have something to quibble about it would be that the camera is a little bit laggy. So if you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as it really does help our channel to grow. And thank you for watching.